So going interfaces are one of the most important things to learn if you want to become good at it. Initially, I had mixed feelings about them because I already had half a decade of experience working with other object-oriented languages where interfaces are pretty similar among them, but in Golang they act differently. So it took me a bit to get used to them. However, if you check my videos, you'll notice that I end up using interfaces in pretty much every video, and that is how important they are for developing good software in Go. So in this video, I'm going to give you a practical explanation and then a hands-on real-world example of how interfaces work and how they can make you a better software engineer by being able to write better, more modular and testable software. Firstly, an interface is a type, so you can define them like so with the interface keywords. And all it does is that it holds signatures for a set of methods. For example, here we have, uh, let's say, a sense a message for a user where you pass the user ID and here we have the int64 and we can return for example an error. So this is the signature of the methods that would implement this interface here and here a medium basically is a way of sending a message to the user. It could be a SMS, it could be an email, it could be a pigeon, it could be anything and so the fun part comes when consuming this interface. Now because they are abstract ideas this means that any method that implements this exact signature it sets to satisfy the medium interface and here for example we have the SMS implementation. We have here a struct that implements this exact signature. And then this medium SMS struct is considered an implementation of the medium. And the same here for the email. And it's important to note that there is no implements keyword in Go, like there would be in other languages. So whether or not a type satisfies the interface, it's determined automatically. Now, let's expand this simple example to something that you probably are going to be doing, which is building an API. Also, if you are looking to learn more about how to build production grade APIs in Go, I have a free video course on the description below, so I'll leave the link there if you want to check it out. So here on the main.go we have a simple HTTP server, just using the standard library. I also have a video covering that as well. But basically here we have just a simple database connection, a router, and we have a service that we create, and then the register route that we are going to see. Now this handler here is very simple. How it does is that it parses the payloads and then we validate it as well. So the last missing part is that we need to register the user. And for that, we could just create here a function and call it today. For example, register users, where we pass in the user payloads, register user payload, and we could return an error. And here we would need to go to the database and do the insert in the table. So for example, here we could pass the database instance, uh, let's say like so. And then here we would do something like this. So basically we're just inserting into the user's table. And then here we can consume it. Uh, let's get the error, register users. We pass in the payloads, the database. And this would be it. So we would need the database has a dependency. So let's add it here. And we also need it on the constructor. And here on the main, we can just pass in our database that we are creating here. And we can just pass it in the service like so. Now here in our tests, if we call this service endpoint test, it would fail because we're not connecting to the database. Or worse, if we are mutating the database, we might not even know it. So for example, to fix this, we could pass here the uh, connect the SQL here and pass in the database. So this would work, but this is just a simple unit test. We don't want to connect to the database. So we need to mock the database completely, which is not, it's not doable. We cannot just mock the whole database. Uh, you might be able to do it, but it's not a good practice. And so we need to mock these methods with side effects that go to an external storage. And this is where interfaces really shine. Now, in most other languages, you would most likely need to install any external library, for example, to do mocks, to do stubs. However, here in Go, we can just use the power of interfaces to solve this very easily. Not only would you already be using interfaces in your services because they make injecting dependencies very easily and natural, but also make your code way more modular. And we're going to see how that works here in a bit. So instead of passing the whole database implementation here, let's create an interface and pass that interface here. For example, I'm going to call this store and it's going to be the store, um, the user store. And let's create a new file called store.go. Now let's create here a type called store, which is going to be a struct. Now the struct is going to receive the database implementation from before. Then I have just created here a simple constructor to help us initiate the store. 
But the most important bit is going to be here, the user store interface that is going to do all the magic. Now, this interface is going to receive the register uh, user that we have created before. So let's just go back here and get the signature, which is like this. Now, we don't need this database part here because we already have it here as a dependency. So this is all we need and we need to pass in as the error as well. Then let's just quickly implement the method for the store. So the store is going to be a valid implementation of the user store implementation. Register users. And it's going to receive the register payload and it's going to return an error. Now the implementation is going to be the same. But here we access the database from here. Now, after this is done, let's go back here and delete this method. We don't need it. We can also uh, delete this database here. And we need actually the store. This is going to be the user store. And here the same. Finally, here on the main, let's delete the database from here. And let's create a new store. So it's going to be the user store. And let's just do new store. And all we need to do is pass here the database. And then we pass in the store interface for the service. So the service now is completely independent from the storage. So we can pass here anything as long as they implement the user store interface. Now, you can see how powerful this is. This is because here in our tests, we can, instead of pass the database, we can pass a mock store. Just like so. Now, this mock store is just a struct that is going to implement that method. So here, let's just create a simple struct without anything attached to it. But then here, we say that the mock store is going to have the register user with the same exact signature. So it's going to also return an error. And here we can do whatever we want. We could just return a real user. We could return anything. Um, let me just fix this. So here we could even return the user, we could return anything. I'm going to return nil. And here we have a valid interface here. Now, if we remove, for example, the error, it would be invalid. So if we go here, Golang compiler already tells us that it is an invalid signature. And to fix it, all we need to do is have the error here. And now if we run our tests, we are sure that we are not mutating or messing up any database that we might have connected in our environs. And finally, here on the service, we need to fix this by accessing the store and then the registered user. We don't need this here because we're not dependent on the implementation of the database. And this is how you can use interfaces in your Golang service handlers. So if you want to go to the next level and level up your Go skills, here are some resources that I would recommend you reading. So for example, we have the go.dev a section on interfaces. It's pretty lengthy and they even talk about some stuff that I didn't mention. And I would also like to recommend the Jordan O'Reilly blog post here about interfaces. I really liked this one. And he also speaks about the type any interface here. And with that, thank you so much for watching. And if you are looking to level up your Golang skills, I also have a free Discord community on the description below. So if that interests you, go check that out and see you on the next one. Thank you.